Hello, my name is Mark Pimentel. I'm a CAM application specialist here at Hawkridge Systems. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can add a edge breaking operation to debur your part. So to save some time after taking the part off the machine, save some production time, we want to debur this part right out of the machine. So we're going to add a deburring or an edge breaking operation to this part file. You can see that I've already added a bunch of operations here to bring the part to what you see on screen. But we still have these sharp edges here and the sharp edges represent edges that um, basically might have burrs on them or they're just sharp edges. We don't want them uh, for handling purposes. So let's go and add a feature that we can use in an operation. And the feature we're going to create by right clicking on my last feature there, I'm just going to go to two and a half axis feature and we'll create a curve feature because the curve feature has an auto select edges for chamfering option. If we were to use open profile, we don't have that option and none of these are open profiles. All these edges here would actually count as closed profiles, which would require or call different strategies. Uh, so we're just going to use the curve feature here. And the curve feature has this auto select edges. When I click on that, you'll see that it analyzes the part and finds all the top sharp edges I might want to deburr. Okay, so you can see them highlighted on screen now. So even these, these bosses here have those edges. So we'll go to end condition. The end condition really doesn't matter here because what we're doing is we're going to be using a chamfering tool and we're just going to break the edge on the top of that feature. But what you do want to see here is at least have some sort of minimum distance here that allows you to kind of drop the tool a little bit. So even though we're going to do just a little bit of a deburr from this edge down, we want that room to, to travel. We want that work envelope. So uh, whatever number here, as long as it's deep enough for your tool to kind of dip a little bit, you're probably okay. So let's just grab that by clicking on the green check mark. And because I selected the uh, the edges for chamfering, that one option, you can see it defaulted to the edge break strategy. So now I just have to right click on that, generate operation plan. You'll see that it added that operation to the bottom there. We'll just right click on that, generate toolpath. And now we have a toolpath that will deburr those edges. Let me just take a look at that in our simulation. Okay, so you can see the color coding shows us that some of those edges were just nicked a little bit. Um, depending on the size of that little deeper, it might count as a gouge in the comparison, but you're intentionally doing that gouge. So that's why we'll let that go. Now let's say your part already had the edge broken by a chamfer. It was already part of the design. So the previous technique would help you when you don't have that edge as part of your design. But here we actually have a chamfer. So this is kind of how would you use the chamfering option, but also it relates to how you would uh, do a deburr when the deburr is already part of the design. So let's do that for the other side. So again, we're going to add a feature. So I'm just going to go to my setup two, right click on my last feature on that side. Again, we'll add a two and a half axis feature. And again, I'm going to use the curve feature, but I'm not going to auto select because if I do that, it doesn't actually find anything because this doesn't count as that edge for chamfering. There's already a chamfer there. Uh, but what that will do is just default it to the edge breaking strategy. So whether I click that or not, I'll still be able to do the same thing. But here I still need to choose that edge. So I'm going to switch this from open chain to convert to loop because that is a planar chain. So if I just grab one of those edges, it finds the rest of it for me. Here I'm choosing the top edge of that chamfer because it'll relate to what I'm going to do with this feature later on in the operation. We'll just finish this off by going to end condition. And again, similar to what I said a second ago, we're just going to make sure that this value is just enough that if I dip the tool past a certain distance, I have enough room to work. So I'll click the green check mark there. We'll generate the operation plan. And before I generate the tool path, I'm going to go in there and I'm just going to modify this because for now, it's just right from the strategies. It has some default values here that don't necessarily match the chamfer that I put there. So I need to actually plug in some information. So I happen to know that this is a 50 thou by 45 degree chamfer. Uh, my tool is already 45 degrees. So I'm just going to go and just put 50 thou as my length. The clearance is how far from that bottom 
edge right there from that chamfer I'd like to go. So again, this is relating back to what I talked about, about the distance or the height of that feature. But one other thing to keep note of here when you're doing the chamfering option is the feature edge. Right now it's set to apex, which assumes that we have that sharp edge similar to what we had in the first instance, when the part is not modeled with the chamfer. That's how we're able to achieve this sort of chamfering, this sort of edging, this sort of uh, um, deburring that we saw with the other side of the part. But here we actually have a chamfer. So we have to tell it that we're using the outer edge of that chamfer. So that's why I chose the top edge of the chamfer as my, my definition there. So with all that in place, we'll click the green check mark or OK. Generate the toolpath. Now we can see that we got a toolpath going around there. And to confirm that this lines up, Let's just get a side view here, and we'll do a step through. So as we see the tool get into position, we'll just zoom in on this, and there we go. Lines up exactly. So I told it to follow that outer edge, which happens to be the top edge of my chamfer. It dipped by that 25 thou on the bottom there, and all of that is based off my tool definition. So here we are, we can just generate this as we go around. You can see that it follows that chain all the way to the end. And then one last test, we can just see if it follows the model by simulating it. Okay, so we start with that sharp edge, play this through, and now you can see that we have the chamfer there. Running the comparison, we can see that it's on size. It matches the design. Now that little bit there is just a consequence of the tool turning that corner. Otherwise, that has been deburred as per the design. Any questions on this or anything else, just give us a call at the main tech line found on our website. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching.